I decided to make a uh, second PC power supply video to address some of the questions I was asked in the last one. So I have a couple different power supplies here with other scenarios different from the last two I looked at and I'll talk about these. Uh, as much as capacitors are a huge part of the build quality and reliability of a power supply I wanted to remind everybody that they're not everything and I'll explain why. Um, this power supply here is probably about six or seven years old by now. I bought this back when I built my first socket A Athlon system. This is a 520 watt Vantech model VAN520A. Let's see what the ratings are here if I can get this to focus. 26 amps on the plus 3.3, 52 amps on the plus 5, 28 amps on the single 12 volt rail. The reason the plus 5 is so big is back then motherboards didn't use the 12 volts to power the CPU voltage regulator and most video cards didn't require a separate power connector either so most of the power was available on the 5 volt circuit which is why this filter choke is so big 52 amps for crying out loud um, also the wires are heavier gauge than most of the later power supplies I've looked at this was one of the very first power supplies to use a 24 pin motherboard connector so they give you an adapter with it right out of the box to uh, connect to the more common 20 pin connector at the time and uh, this had some of the cheapest capacitors you could get but they still lasted a few years because of how well this is filtered before it gets to the capacitors uh, with, a, with a choke like that you know and the size of these heat sinks and the size of the output transistors uh, very smooth power before it even gets to the capacitor so they don't have to put up with very much ripple current and it also has three 80 millimeter fans that run at a pretty high speed so this thing never even had a chance to get get very warm um, so it did last up until a couple months ago here before those bulging leaking capacitors finally started to affect the output uh, this thing weighs a ton and uh, it's actually built by a company called Top Power um, that's why the transformer says top on it there. Uh, also note the size of that transformer. That thing is huge. Uh, even for a 520 watt. I mean that's just a mammoth transformer. Uh, over here we have a 650 watt C-Sonic. And uh, I think the transformer is even not quite as big. Now this power supply here before I talk about the C-Sonic. I'm going to be recapping this one and uh, it still runs other than the bad caps so after I replace all the capacitors this is going to be an outstanding power supply all the fans are still good and uh, other than that it works great the next example I have here is a relatively new C-Sonic power supply out of a friend of mine's computer this is a model SS-650HT Notice the difference in current ratings versus the old Vantech. This has 30 amps on the plus 5 rail and 4 12 volt rails at 18 amps apiece. Now, this could have been a great power supply. Uh, they used great caps, the United Chemicon KY series on the output side. Those are long lifetime and high temperature rated. Six or 8,000 hours I think they're rated for uh, 105 degree operation and there's a Rubicon cap on the input side and uh, they also did a good job with the heat sinks and the filter chokes and there's plenty of connections where they messed up here was they have a circuit that runs the fan at a low speed to keep it quiet and then as it heats up it's supposed to feed the, speed the fan up and uh, that circuit failed and either the fan came to a stop or didn't speed up as much as it should have the power supply actually overheated and burned up after about four months and uh, he sent this back to C-Sonic to have it fixed and they sent him back a different one that was dead out of the box I don't know if it has a shorted rectifier or what could be wrong with it uh, obviously they didn't check it before they sent it out the door I'm really disappointed with C-Sonic for that they're supposed to be one of the better manufacturers and it wasn't just this one I have the Corsair branded version in my computer upstairs that's a 520 watt rated and it has the same board in it mine did the same thing mine burned up after two months and uh, I've gotten a replacement one since then same model and uh, I'm going to be modifying that 
with a uh, better fan and hooking the fan directly to the computer motherboard and let that control it for the cooling. But, uh, let's see here, there's something else I wanted to mention. I remember now what I was going to talk about. It was why newer power supplies have multiple 12 volt outputs. Uh, we call them rails because it's just an old, I, th I think the terminology goes back to industrial power supplies that would mount on these big metal bars in factories as modules and, the, and those bars would go down to uh, control machinery and that's, that's they were called rails, power rails. So <clears throat> when I say a rail I mean a a dedicated output for a certain given voltage. But anyway, the reason they do that is say you have a modern computer that's using like a big quad core processor you'll have that plugged in with its own dedicated output on, a, on either a 4 or 8 pin connector like this one depending on your motherboard and that way the other 12 volt outputs which would run your PCI Express video cards and your hard drive motors and your cooling fans things like that those can have noise back on the line and varying load stuff like that and it won't affect the voltage going to your processor it'll be nice and clean and steady and uh, that gives you better stability say you're sitting at your desktop with 2D graphics up and your video cards not using a whole lot of power and then you load up a game and it starts pulling a lot of amps in 3D mode like a lot of the modern video cards do uh, the PCI Express 12 volt rail can, can you know start putting out more current and it won't affect the voltage on your CPU power rail and uh, in cases like this where there's more than two rails I think this one's actually two or three rails and not four like they say it is I'm looking at the bottom of the board and it looks like there's only two bundles of yellow wires there on separate connections but anyway uh, it's, it's all about stability and better voltage regulation another thing people ask me is are there any power supplies that I would recommend now that's a tough question because I've worked with a lot of power supplies whether cheap or expensive or otherwise and I always seem to find quirks with them one way or another either you have one like this that's a good circuit design and good cooling and they have cheap capacitors that's the most common instance you'll see with the with the ones that are kind of mid-priced not the extremely cheap ones or you have one like this that's an expensive power supply this particular one I think was a little over hundred and twenty dollars or so uh, you know good quality components nice capacitors nice circuit design but they don't cool it properly and that's actually a fairly common problem I've seen it a lot with even cheaper power supplies that they all have fan control circuits in them nowadays to, to make them quieter uh, where this one came up short versus those is that this one actually got to the point it burned itself up after a very short period of time uh, most other power supplies I've used with with fan control circuits like that would run for at least uh, two to four years now what I like to do especially at work with uh, the equipment I work with uses a lot of PC power supplies like this uh, although they don't have to be so big so I buy like the cheap 300 watt sparkle power supplies that have kind of middle of the road capacitors and they have a good circuit design in them but they have a fan speed control circuit as well I usually bypass that fan speed control to run the fan at full speed because I'm not worried about noise and commercial equipment like that and you'll get a good few years out of a cheap $30 power supply um, that's another thing I want to mention the, a big difference between the extremely cheap power supplies and a better one is is not that they last longer you know that that's a point too but that's the other thing is is more expensive power supplies have better protection circuitry so when they do break they don't damage everything in your computer in the process uh, cheap really cheap power supplies don't have very good protection circuitry so if something goes out of voltage regulation it doesn't shut down uh, ones like this if something goes out of regulation or it goes out of spec say your 5 volts goes too high your 12 volts goes too high it'll shut the power supply down right away um, because the protection circuitry is a dedicated circuit that's usually extremely reliable uh, even on you know mid-priced power supplies